Never stop dreaming. 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 Never Let the world and the other people see your story, and uh, just to inspire a lot of people who feel that their dreams aren't worth it. And I mean, we live in a time where people need really need some hope and uh, something to hold on to. But um, yeah, man, I just want to give you opportunity. Who is Jeremy? Where does he come from? And uh, man, what what pushes you to play the the next level rugby that you do? Uh, thank you for having me, Van. Um, um, Obviously, I'm from I'm from Bloemfontein in the Free State. Um, I'm currently based in in France, Algeria, playing here. And yeah, I'm just I'm just enjoying I'm just enjoying playing rugby so much at the moment. And I've I've recently really enjoyed starting rug, playing rugby. Um, I was diagnosed in 2016 with a rare kidney disease, disease. So I think ever since I was just so humble and so grateful for the opportunity that I have. And after that, I, I just told myself, after my recovery, I just told myself, um, now is the time, every time that I, that I go out on the field and, I, and if I play rugby, I'm going to give it my all. And I've never looked back since that day. I've, I've, I've really worked out since that. And I'm just, I'm just proud of myself who I am today. And I hope I, I can be some, some kind of inspiration for the other young boys out there and the guys that think that, that there's no hope. Like, must just believe in and push through. Everything's possible. Yeah, no, that's awesome, and I, I just want to really honor you for um, stepping back into rugby as well, especially after the kidney disease. And you said basically, yes, you know what? Doesn't matter what, I'm still going to push through. Um, doesn't matter what comes yeah. my way. And um, man, I think a lot of, especially when I reflect back on my career as well, youngsters and so on, you don't really think of any diseases of injuries or anything that yeah, um, yeah. that that can happen and what was the thing when when you got that diagnosis where they told you listen you have this disease in that point of stage what went through your mind did you think okay well here's my rugby career done and dusted um what did you face in that specific point of time of your life Obviously, I was very, very like emotional, and I've worked so so hard. And the first thing I told myself and I asked God, I'm like, God, let your will be done. And after that, you can't really question, and you can't really ask God or question God that what's happening and all of that. But um, I was I was just in a in a moment where I just took time out, and I obviously had to. I couldn't play rugby for two or three months. I just had to sit at home. Um, and I was, I was just reflecting on what if I could have done this, the right of it. But uh, um, what I've realized is that you shouldn't take it for granted. As a, as a, a professional rugby player, you need to save as much money as you can. Yeah. Because our, our career is very short and you need to have a, 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 a plan B. You need to have a big stuff going through my head and a lot of negative thinking. But as a believer, I just start to praying and, and believing I would come out of this, this thing. No, that's awesome, man. And um, it's, it's just really humbling to hear as well, especially um, chatting with a believer as well and having faith in God. I mean, just when I look back at my career as well, it was a time you're so lost, you're part of the world and you don't really understand what your true identity is. But um, man, it's always the best. It doesn't um, always seem <laughs> the best way to follow God's will, but um, it always turns out for the better. And um, at that point of stage, um, did you have a plan B or did you think, okay, well, I need to really start working on a plan B at, at that point of stage? 
I had, I had obviously, I had some savings, so there was like a few weeks into this thing. I'm still, I'm still waiting for my results and I'm recovering. So I had savings and I was thinking about a lot of business opportunities. And also, I was just, I wasn't sure what to do, but also I had like a bit of experience. I studied business management at usually. So I had a little bit of experience in that, in that way, but um, I, I had savings. So I was thinking of, of, of business plans, but I wasn't sure at the time what to do. Obviously, if something like that happens so quick, you don't know what to do and you, you're overthinking a lot of stuff. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. But I'm, I'm glad that you, that you have something in place as well and you that make sure, okay, well, if this, this doesn't work out, you don't have a plan B in place. And um, what would in, a word of encouragement be for you, for the youngsters um, that's, let's say, at high school level now already, because I know there's a lot of youngsters, they don't go to school with books anymore. They just take their rugby boots and say, well, I'm going to be a professional rugby player for the rest of my life. Um, if you could give them that 16-year-old uh, Jeremy, if you could go back and you could give him advice, what would that advice be to say, you know what, Jeremy, um, you need to pull your socks up. This is how things are going to plan out. Uh, what advice would you give, give those youngsters? My advice to them would be, Never think once you made under 19 that you've made it. Um, you must always feel comfortable in an uncomfortable position or an uncomfortable situation. And like my, my, my one thing that always stuck with me is that humbleness. I, I was always trying to be so humble and, you know, work my work towards the very best I can be and just, just be smart man don't it don't be in contact with the wrong friends because you don't know you, you can go out tonight with the wrong friends obviously as a youngster when i was on a 1921 you earn you're earning money that time so after a game you go out with your friends you have a drink or two you sometimes be stupid you know but in this time in life that we're living in today it's so 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 dangerous to, to do that because like if you one mistake or one wrong place with wrong friends you can just might end up ending your career end up in jail end up using um stuff that you, you you're not supposed to use um and i've always had this scripture with me since i started playing it's matthew 21 verse 22 if you believe if you ask if you believe you will receive anything you ask for in prayer so that's me basically everything that i do every step that I make, every move that I make, everything, I just put that scripture in, in, in God's hands and I just ask God, listen here, this is what I want. And I just, I'm just patient for him to, uh, to give me his answers and, and just waiting on his timing. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Because I also, the sad thing is um, on this journey as well, uh, when I still played some rugby, um, we lost two of our friends as well who came back after partying as well. And that's, that's not a good thing that you don't want uh, to miss a teammate, family member, and um, especially the heartache that uh, that would cause your parents. So, um, guys, stay safe and uh, don't do stupid things. And um, yeah, Jeremy, so looking forward to to your future. You're playing there in France. Um, currently in lockdown, I think you are tackling the cupboards and kicking the uh, <laughs> the laundry on the floor, making like it's a ball or something. So. <laughs> um, how, how are you keeping up with your uh, frustration at this point of stage? And um, how's rugby that side? Are you enjoying it? Are you excited for the next season that's coming up? Um, I know yes, yes. I'm, I'm, well. I'm so, I'm like, when I walked in here the first day, I've always wanted to play top 14. I can remember ever since being a 19 year, 20 old boy. For some other reason, I just wanted to play top 14. Um, obviously, my dream was to be a springboard one day. Any, any boy's dream is to play for the box one day but unfortunately things didn't work out for me that way so when I moved to Russia at first I, I, I always had this idea of playing top 14 and when this opportunity came up I was literally shocked and so overwhelmed that the first day when I walked into my new club here and it was I couldn't believe 
this 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 dream came, that, that, that just came through. It was such a relief. I mean, such a blessing all as well. But I'm really enjoying France. I'm enjoying the rugby. Uh, I love it. I'm every part of it. Um, if I can, I would still play a few more years yet until I retire. Um, talking about the lockdown, it's very frustrating because we were supposed to be in lockdown only until the 15th of April, but I think they're going to extend it because of the, the virus is spreading all over the country. Yeah? And I'm just keeping myself busy with reading, doing some home workouts. I'm currently buzzing fasting. So I'm just also getting my spiritual, my spiritual side on, on a level. Yeah. So um, it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been good. No, it's been awesome. good. Sorry, I just lost you. So. No worries, man. So it's been good so far. No, that's awesome. And um, what kind of books do you like to read? Um, I'm busy. I'm busy. Um, at a moment, with a shoe dog by Phil Knight. Yeah. It's a memoir by the creator of Nike. Um, it's a book, the best-selling book that was out last year. So I'm not into reading that much, but this is going to be my, I think, second book reading. Um, and I also like sometimes just like the only book that I read is like the Bible. <laughs> so this is a, it's a <laughs> new a challenge bit. for me. <laughs> it's a new challenge for me. Yeah, I know, definitely. I can remember when I was in so high school, my brother used to write on paper, you need to read, but literally everywhere, and he stuck it all over my room. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. now so I realized the I'm importance a, of reading. I'm not a, I'm not a reader, big reader, but I'm, I'm starting to, to get into that habit now because I have a lot of time. So I'm starting to get into that habit. And like sometimes I'll just make like notes from the scriptures that I read and you know, so that's that's what I'm doing with my free time. And obviously, listen to music. Um, I just like my 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 own time, spending yeah. time with myself. I no, enjoy. That's it. great. That's great, man. And tell me, Jeremy, who was your best roommate that uh, you got to spend time with over traveling? And um, who was your worst one? I don't. I don't think you, the worst <laughs> one. will have to tag him in this video, uh, unfortunately. But <laughs> you have to give your reasons no, as well. My, my worst roommate. My best roommate. I've when I was in the Alfred, I loved with Robin Johannes. Oh, very, yeah. very amazing guy. Oh, amazing, amazing. Amazing human being, amazing person, a friend, everything. He's like literally so close to my heart. Um, he's a very, very genuine guy. And when I was in Russia, I loved with Dean Gordon. <laughs> it's just as funny. I never had like bad roommates, um, especially for the ones that were snowing while I was sleeping. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I never had like a bad experience with a roommate. Um, I think it's because I'm I'm just always see always myself and you know so those those were the two guys that was there was like my my roomies the other so, guys now they were chilled they were chilled and um, so I bet with with Ruben's size as well you guys were best training buddies as well pumping the iron yeah, they, no, <laughs> they had the Puma no, no. <laughs> but there's the thing like he's a he's a he's a he's a gym freak like. You go to gym every every night after training. You'll go home and you'll cook, and then afterwards you'll go home. You go you go back to the gym. But for me, I'm more like a natural athlete type of. I don't use any supplements. I don't like gym as much. I just do most of the stuff that I do is explosive. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not a gym freak. Like I don't go to gym that much and love this much. So I'll just basically do. Um, some explosive stuff, but at a jump of obviously at a jump, I have to do like um, stuff in the morning, you know, with a team. Yeah, but I'm not that, that big on jump. And I must say that's quite a touchy subject as well when you look of um, a lot of rugby players these days as well, and when you look at the youngsters, um, parents already getting them at a young age on supplementation, um, super yeah, diet, yeah, what to eat. I, um, banned substances and those kind of things and um, I know I also played in an environment where um, we were literally ha I'm not going to name any names or anything like that but 
um, where band substance was like a handing out kind of thing where um, it's so easy to get so easy accessible and I feel it's quite a topic that people are scared to talk about and no, um, they didn't they really want to like I can acknowledge like personally um, I was using I was using something during a under 21 current cup season where or on a preseason and when it got into game stage um, I was stressing the one time because I was going to get tested and they called yeah. me afterwards and they told me this and yeah here's a cup you need to put some urine in it and I was stressing so badly and the thing is when I got that back um, it tasted negative so th luckily for me but the sad part is still I mean it's something that I used to enhance my personal development my personal gains yeah, um, yeah. So it, it actually gave myself an unfair advantage to someone um, else who might be um, he might be working harder than myself or anything like that but you get stuck in an environment where you see people around you succeeding and they're doing better um, what would your advice be for for youngsters who find themselves currently um, using those substances and um, what would you want to tell someone like that I just had a very not a very bad experience with supplements because I never actually use it but um, I just think that it, it it differs from 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 person to person like me personally um i think guys that use that obviously for them it works for them but for me it doesn't work for my body because i can't use it i have my my kidneys are not are not working with the supplements and i think there's a lot of youngsters as well that just wants to use supplements for the sake of using supplements you know yeah. I think if you if you wanna if you wanna develop your body or wanna work on on certain parts of your body, you need to like go to someone that's that's educated with the supplements or that can give you more detail about listening to do this or you can concentrate on this or focus on this or focus on this because some guys they go to they go to the supplement store and they just buy stuff on the on the shelves that they don't have any knowledge about. Yeah. So I, just, I can just say, be careful. I don't have any knowledge about supplements. I don't have any um, experience about supplements, but all I can say is that be careful. Make sure that it's tested and it's, it's not an abandoned substance, substance. Yeah, no, and definitely. I want to encourage those youngsters as well, or any rugby player or any person actually in sport, that don't be ignorant in using something um, to gain um, personal advantage yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. And at a time where you're peaking at your base and they test you and you test positive, I mean, it's done. Your career, sponsors, everything, you, it's going to get stripped away from you. So rather stay safe, yeah. stay in the lane, doing the right things. Uh, don't lose focus on um, your personal gain and your personal... I've always had guys, I've always had guys um, asking me if I ever use supplements or if I ever use steroids, <laughs> then I'm just like, no, but... There's a few guys that obviously told me I've used steroids apparently, but as far as I can remember, for the 28, 29 years that I've been alive or that I've been living, I've never used supplement or I've never used steroids, but they would convince me otherwise. So I think yeah. um, that would that would be your own secret if you use supplement if you use steroids. Obviously, no one will tell no one will tell the next guy listening I've used sub I've used steroids, you know, yeah. I've used steroids and I've used this and but um, yeah, I think for me to go the natural way is the best. That's what I think. Obviously, you have to work harder. If you go into the gym and you, you, you don't have energy, some guys take a pre-workout. I can't take a pre-workout. So yeah. that's sometimes challenging for me because sometimes I feel tired and I don't have like enough motivation to jump. Then they would use a pre-workout which boosts them and would be so easy for them to jump. As for me, I have to find myself, I have to find my own motivation. You've, you've got a supernatural power, brother. You don't need that. Your power <laughs> comes from above. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Man. And um, yeah, Jeremy, so we, yeah, we come to the last part of the um, show. As I told you, you're going to have to sing a song. So now I'm just joking, man. No stress about that. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Yeah, so man, just a last word. Where can we find you on social media? Um, is there any other things that you would like the people would want to follow about you? 
and um, just a word of encouragement I'm for not, the people today. I'm not big on social. I'm not big on social media. Um, I have an Instagram account. It's a Jeremy Jordan. Um, it's just Jeremy Jordan, and my Twitter account is also Jeremy Jordan. The same, and Facebook is also Jeremy Jordan. So um, that's my that's my account handles. Um, I'm not I'm not big on like these other guys makes videos of the workouts and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm more of an easy guy. I'm not big on social media, although I post a lot of stories and stuff. But um, that's where you can find me. And yeah. Okay, awesome, man. And that's what it, encouragement yeah. uh, could you give for the guys, especially in South Africa as well? Just a shout out to them, especially in this lockdown time and uh, message. Oh, your just 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 like. Um, the guys in South Africa, just be safe and just stay indoors. Um, if you're going to move around, you're going to get a virus. That's 100%. If you're going to, if you sit at home, you, you're safe at home. So that's all because we, we've been, this is our second week now in lockdown. We're going into our third week now for three more weeks, I think. And that's what they tell us here. Like, there's nothing that can cure the disease at the moment. It's immune in winter, so South African guys are going into winter now, so it's going to be more dangerous for them. Um, the only thing that they can drink, of course, is tea with honey, ginger, and lemon in. That's all that, that the people drink here yeah, as well, every day, a cup of that. But that's all you, have, you can do is just stay at home and keep, your, and keep your immune system pumping, man. Keep it going, keep it, keep it healthy. No, awesome, man. Thanks a lot for that. And um, so, guys, this has been an awesome episode with uh, the amazing Jeremy Jordan. I just want to thank you for your time once again. And um, yeah, like, subscribe on the YouTube channel. Um, leave a comment down below how this has affected you. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Stay